Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. Then Again, we had a uh, Brian Danielson problem. No, no. Is, is there more on, to so, say? Yes. Yeah, Sheeta won with the Falcon Arrow. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. So I need, I need on Wednesday for them to clarify this Brian Danielson thing before I lose my mind. This is as bad as the Young Bucks and Acclaimed and FTR and the tag team titles. What's going on with Brian Danielson? What's happening? He talks about, I got some uh, physical issues. My neck had a lot of concussions. Put my body through a lot. I did a lot of things on the indies that a lot of guys nowadays didn't do just to get noticed. Then he says, odds are I'm probably going to need neck surgery before the end of this year. That's news, says Ross. It is. I'm like, it sure is. But you're winning the title in two weeks. Okay. Uh -huh. So he said, I've had four chances to win the title. Every time I failed, but I've learned something about myself. I'm the best mentally I've ever been, and I'm, at Wembley, it'll be the most mentally strong I've ever been. So is he retiring or not? What? Like, I know the real answer. The real answer is, yeah, of course, he's not retiring. He wants to wrestle forever. What is the AEW storyline with Brian Danielson? Is there an end date that we're supposed to know about? Is he just, if he wins a title in storyline, is he just going to defend it until he loses it and then get his next surgery? Has he scheduled his neck surgery for November? So if he wins a title, he has to vacate it on the last day of October because he's got... Like, we don't know any of this. It's a complete mystery. And it would help if all of this was explained. Here Is he are. vacating the title? Because that was certainly suggested on Wednesday that this could be his final match. That's what they said. Could be his last match. So is he going to win the title and vacate it? <laughs> He's going to have more retirement tours than Kiss. He's going to, he's going to leave for a while. He's going to come back. He's going to leave for a while. Come back. There is no way you can take, you can take the wrestling out of the boy, but you can't take the boy out of wrestling, or vice he's a, versa. He's the boy who called Wolf. Ah, I got people again. Are you sure he's winning? Listen, he's winning. There's a reason they gave you the stipulation that if he doesn't win, he will never wrestle again. He didn't say I will never wrestle again on SmackDown like he did with Roman Reigns. He didn't say, I will never wrestle in AEW again. He said, I will never wrestle again. And Brian Danielson is not going to go out there and lie about that. He's winning the title in Wembley. The question is not Wembley. The question is what happens after Wembley. Mm -hmm. Is he just going to go drop it to Darby at uh, Arthur Ashe? Is he going on a long run? And, and that's, that's all, actually, that's all irrelevant. In storyline, like, what's going on? Why is the guy fighting for the title if he needs neck surgery? Like within before the year's over. That's a great question. Why is the guy getting a title shot? Like Tony said, okay, well you're going to retire at Wembley, but here have a title shot on your very last night. We just did that with Sting. Mm -hmm. uh, could some of this be explained? Like what's going on here? Maybe nice. the neck surgery thing is a lie to make you think. Well, that I'm sure because... his neck. He probably won't need neck surgery this year. I'm sure that's part of the storyline. But yeah, still, but what I'm saying that's is the story like... they're telling. I know, but they're saying it because they want you to think that if he's getting neck surgery, they're not going to give him the title. Well, yes, they could be. But so then I don't know why they be... would bother doing the stipulation, which basically tells you, buy the pay-per-view because he's winning. Well, they got to throw some sort of uh, deals in there. Yes. Uh, Sheeta was backstage. She says she needs real competition. So therefore, she's challenging Mercedes Monet on Wednesday. And she says that she's the ace of the women's division. She's going to win, take the title to Wembley. Skeptical. Unlikely. All right, main events. They liked it. Uh, Malachi Black, Buddy Matthews, and Brody King versus Juice Robinson, Colton Gunn, and Austin Gunn with Christian as a special referee in his glorious turtleneck. <laughs> this First... went exactly, exactly as one would figure it would. Yeah. Exactly. The crowd was chanting turtleneck at one point. The one thing I noticed was Christian was much taller than I thought he was. He's a tall dude. He was towering over the rest of these guys. Buddy Matthews and Malachi Black just putting inches on these guys. But yes, um, I enjoyed everything except for that part where Juice pretended to pee on Buddy Matthews. That was dumb. <laughs> everything else was great, including the finish. 
But yeah, go ahead. Everybody hits all their finishers. Everybody's down. Christian starts counting. And I already knew what was happening because he's counting fast. One, two, three. So finally he gets to nine and Buddy gets to his feet. And Christian spears him and goes, ten. (laughs) It's over. Nobody wins. And then the patriarchy hits the ring, destroys everybody with chairs. And they beat him and they beat him. And I don't know what the hell happened afterwards because my DVR ran out. They had a long overrun again. And, uh, oh, well, must not have been that important. But we'll we'll find out who gets a title shot at Wembley if you can't figure it out already. They just beat him with chairs. There was a part where Austin was whipped in the corner, and they whipped him so hard it looked like he was going to fly. Oh, my gosh. He barely was able to grab onto the rope to save his life, but he was about to go flying over the ring post and into the third row. Um, uh, kill switch choke slammed Colton on a chair. Uh, Christian hit the kill switch on Malachi onto chairs. Yeah, they just destroyed these guys. Yeah, you didn't mess much, Brian. It was Excellent. it was a good beat down, and obviously, it's going to lead to uh, them at the uh, pay per view. See, that's the only problem with the idea of doing a three way with the Bucks, FTR, and Acclaimed. I presume they're doing a three way as well. A three way, three way. We sure. would be doing the exact same thing with the tag titles and the trios titles. Which I guess is possible. I mean, it's Wembley. You want to get as many people on the show as you can. But, you think they're uh, going to do a three-way with the acclaimed, the Bucks, and FTR? Yeah. I don't like that. What else are you going to do? The only other option is to beat one of the teams, and then the other two guys end up in this casino gauntlet. Because it was FTR and the Bucks last year at, That's true. at Wembley. That's yeah, true. Yeah, do that match again? No. FTR not at Wembley? No. Or I guess you could put him in that uh, gauntlet battle royal. But that would be... Uh, All right, I'll buy your three-way guess. Multiple three-ways set up the same way. Hmm. Is what nine guys have. in the ring, that's going to be chaos. It's better than nine belts on the shoulders. <laughs> that's <my> true. <laughs> that is that's true. true, I guess. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.